Hi, in one of my projects I used electromagnet. Electromagnet was pulling and pushing permanent magnet which was attached to a flower. Simultaneously light was flickering. And as a result, flowers were doing weird things. They were kinda dancing, were moving leaving a shadow behind. And at the beginning I tried to make an electromagnet by myself. Of course, without calculations or theory behind. Yeah, who needs this stupid theory? It's boring. I had only basic physics knowledge. That magnetic field occurs around the conductor and the more turns you have, the higher that field. And of course, I watched some YouTube videos of how to make it. But here is the problem. It sucked. Completely. It couldn't lift anything. And I understood that I needed deeper knowledge of the process. I watched some more videos about theory, read some books, looked inside an electromagnet and actually made some simulations. And now I can tell you how to create a good electromagnet and why it works. And why this disgrace I created doesn't work. So, to create a really strong electromagnet, you need a couple things. First, hypermobility material core that serves as a base for a magnet. Second, a lot of coil lines around this core, like really a lot. Third, current that flows through that coil. The bigger, the better. But what really matters is exact answers for these questions, like what material is the best, how many coil turns there must be, thousand, ten thousand, a million, so we can pull a whole continent with it. How big must be the current and why core shape matters at all? Let's find it out together. And we're gonna start from the simplest example possible and then transfer knowledge to a more complex examples. Imagine we have a coil with some turns and some current flows through it. This coil creates a magnetic field around and it's already a simple electromagnet, poles of which can be defined using the right hand rule. And the main magnetic field characteristic we care about is magnetic flux density, denoted by letter B. It basically shows how strong the field at the specific point is. For such a simple example, it can be calculated using next formula. And formula speaks for itself. Higher current creates stronger field, as well as more coil turns proportionally increase magnetic field strengths. Also, the shorter the length of the coil, the stronger the field, because you have more winds per length, and mu zero is just a magnetic constant. But we are talking about electromagnets. So, how do we calculate force of an electromagnet, even such a simple like this, knowing only B? Using another extremely simple formula. Flux density in square multiplied by coil cross-section area divided by 2 and a magnetic constant. For example, if you have 100 turns and 10 amp current flows, it has a length of 15 mm and diameter of 7 mm, a bit of a mess and here we go. Field density of 83 millitesla and force of 100 millinewtons. Not much, right? But if we increase number of turns to 1000, we will have 0.8 tesla and 10 newtons already. That's 100 times more. And just as a quick reminder, 1 newton is required to hold 100 grams under Earth's gravity. So 10 newtons in our example means 1 kilo. That means that with such a coil we can lift a weight of 1 kilo? Theoretically, yes, but in reality, not exactly. Also, coil that is able to carry such a current will be of a really thick wire. As a result, such a magnet will be really big. If only we could improve it somehow. And actually we can. We need to put a core inside that increases magnetic field strengths. It gives an opportunity to create a stronger and smaller electromagnet. So let's have such a core. And let's have a look how magnetic field changes in this situation. If the core material is iron. Everything is kinda easy. Magnetic field inside core will be mu times higher. What is a mu? Mu is a parameter of a material called permeability. You can find it in a standard tables. It shows how stronger the magnetic field in this material relatively to air. So let's assume that field inside iron is 1000 times stronger. That gives us 83 millitesla without a core and 83 tesla with a core. That's a great value, we can do a strong electromagnet with that. Eh, uh, there is a problem again. Each material has its limits, flux density limits. You cannot achieve flux density higher than some value. And when material reaches its limits, it's called saturated. For example, iron alloys cannot have more than 2 tesla. And after saturation it doesn't matter how you increase the current or how many additional coil turns you make. You cannot have more than that. So 83 tesla in reality would be 2 tesla. But still that's a great success from 0.8 tesla to a 2 tesla using a core. So the electromagnet must be much stronger. Now with that knowledge let's have fun looking how I was trying to create electromagnet from scratch. So first attempt was to take a ball that were nearby and bind as much coil turns as I could with a pretty thick wire. And I got around 300 winds and the current limit was 150 milliamps. And yeah, even according to the formulas it couldn't work. Low current, not enough wire turns, but maybe the bolt saved the situation with its high permeability. Yeah, high permeability is just 50. 
or even less. That's a 100 times lower than pure iron has, so the force it creates is negligible. That's a disaster. But even from such a fail, we can learn, we can conclude the wisdom. Don't take the first bolt you see, it might have low permeability and your magnet will suck. By the way, in this example I didn't really use permeability of a core in the formula, but why? Because between this and this there is a huge difference. At this example we have a fully closed high permeability magnetic core. Magnetic flux flows through the core all the time, and magnetic field experiences low magnetic resistance along its path, or it's also called reluctance. But here situation is completely different. Magnetic flux need to go through the air, through the area with a high reluctance. And how this affects strength of a magnetic field? Obviously it decreases it. It's like putting additional resistor in an electric circuit current decreases, and in magnetic circuits magnetic flux decreases, and correspondingly magnetic flux density. Resulting permeability will be lower, and it's called effective permeability, or permeability of a material with a gap. And already this effective permeability must be written into the formula. In the bolt scenario, because initial permeability is low, effective permeability is also extremely small, almost like in the air, that's why it's not in the formula. So as a conclusion, gap in a core reduces its permeability significantly. Finally, let's have a look how a good electromagnet is made, and using it as an example, let's find exact answers for the question I stated at the beginning of the video. This is a 5 bucks 12 volts 50 newtons electromagnet. Because it's powered from a constant voltage, let's first measure its resistance to find out the current. And it's a 35 ohms, which gives us approximately 350 milliamps. And as you probably expected, there are a lot of coil turns inside. I measured diameter of a wire and calculated approximate number of turns according to resistance. There are around one and a half thousand turns. That's a lot, as we expected. And the material is not just a regular carbon steel, it's an electric steel with high electric permeability. And that's it. That's a whole electromagnet, a lot of coil turns inside a core. So now we are ready to define steps required to design good electromagnet. First of all, you need to take a material with a high initial permeability, electric steel or an iron with values of 4 5 thousandths will do the job. Then you define what holding force you need, and according to that force you calculate magnet cross-section area. Bigger magnet obviously will pull harder. Also you need to take into account that electromagnet core is saturated. For iron it's too tesla. Because what's the point of using a big piece of core and not saturated? As a result, knowing cross-section, you can already define the length of the core and the current needed to saturate it. The only tricky thing in here is an effective permeability. This thing can vary greatly, it depends on core shape, material you want to magnetize, distance to that material and even temperature. And in reality it's pretty small value. But as soon as another material with a high permeability touches the magnet, for example iron piece you want to pull, it creates a path with a lower reluctance and effective permeability increases significantly. Field density increases or saturates and it can hold significant weights now. That is the reason why industrial magnets cannot lift big weights from a distance, they need to touch the material and then they can lift it. So coming back to calculations, with a known flux density you can calculate how big must be the current, number of turns and length of the core to have a core saturated. The only thing left is to pick a proper wire gouge. Cause we use 12 volts DC as a power supply, we can use winding resistance to limit the current. So we calculate wire diameter accordingly to a resistance needed. And if you need this file with all calculations, please send a request on the email that is in the description, and I will send it to you. Now let's look at one more extremely important thing we haven't talked about yet. The shape of a magnet. Shape of the core. If you just google electromagnet, you find a lot of pictures of nails, rods and just the windings. Those are not real electromagnets used in an industry. Real electromagnets, small and big one, have pretty similar structure. They look like a pancake with a winding at the center. And from the first point of view, benefits of such a structure might be not obvious. But let's compare it to a solenoid. When something sticks to the solenoid, there is still a huge air gap left that reduces its effective permeability and holding force. Field density in such case is still limited by an air gap. But when iron sticks to this structure, air gap decreases significantly, or in ideal situation it doesn't exist at all. Effective permeability in such case is much much higher, and correspondingly holding force is much stronger. So in such terms, pancake structure is much better. Also C-shaped structure is used cause it can do the same thing. For example, part of a transformer may serve as a core for an electromagnet, but pancake structure is more common. So thank you very much for watching, I hope you've learned something new and won't do mistakes I did.